Trophy Ridge Outfitters here near Carlisle, Wyoming, Northeast Wyoming. You cannot ask for a better place to have a close encounter with a mature buck. I'm hunting with fellow outdoor writer Bob Robb. He is a legend. He has done it all. He's a good friend of mine, and we're both trying to get after some mature whitetails. Out steps the biggest six pointer I have ever seen. So Dan's trying to kill this deer for maybe three days. Can't seem to quite pull it off for some reason. I'm not sure why, because the footage is like, well, it's right there, Dan. One morning they decide to go and uh, hunt a new spot to kind of give this area a little rest or whatever, and Dan shoots a really nice 10 point because he's got the four leaf clover in his ear, as he always does, generally. You put a nice buck in front of me, I'm not gonna pass him up. And that buck at 15 yards, it had to happen. We just punched our tag, there's no doubt about it. You heard that pop. It was 15 yards. So about that six pointer, hey, I didn't get to shoot it, but if you put Bob Rob in that blind, I'm betting on Bob Rob. All of a sudden we get a text. It's Dan, big buck down, big buck down. Rather than text back immediately and say, hey, nice job, I look at Larry, I go, hey, that means we can hunt the big six, right? Dan Schmidt and Bob Robb are back in Carlisle, Wyoming for their annual archery hunt. During the first few days, Dan almost had a close encounter with a mature six point that had everyone in camp talking. So here we are at Trophy Ridge Outfitters. It's the middle of September, the acorns are starting to fall, the deer are feeding in some ag fields, but they're also going to acorns on a regular basis. We're hunting some blinds, and I'm here with Dan Schmidt, the editor of Deer and Deer Hunting, and Dan, somehow got put in a good spot. Trophy Ridge Outfitters near Carlisle, Wyoming. I can guarantee you can come here and you can shoot a deer. It, it's gonna happen. It's just, it's so many deer, so many opportunities. That's where we are right now. The first couple days, well actually the first day we got in there, we're hunting and it was a pretty nice setup. We saw a bunch of deer, a lot of young deer, some nice young bucks, does, a lot of things coming through that canyon, coming out to the field. And lo and behold, you know, on my bucket list has always been a big six pointer. I don't know why, but a mature six pointer to me is, it's fascinating because you just don't see them. Out steps the biggest six pointer I have ever seen. So Dan's trying to kill this deer for maybe three days. Can't seem to quite pull it off for some reason. I'm not sure why, because the footage is like, it's right there, Dan. But so one, one morning they decide to go and uh, hunt a new spot to kind of give this area a little rest or whatever. And I'm off in another area in a transition zone, see some deer, nothing. And my guide, Larry Compton, comes back and goes, you know, that big six point is standing right by the road. We're like, you, you're joking me. So we drive over and look, and there he is having a nice day. We drive off, all of a sudden we get a text. It's Dan. You know, I really wanted that six pointer. It would have been cool, but I didn't put my whole hopes and dreams on that. Hey, I'm Dan Schmidt, right? You put a nice buck in front of me, I'm not gonna pass him up. And that buck at 15 yards, it had to happen. We just punched our tag, there's no doubt about it. You heard that pop. It was 15 yards. Rather than text back immediately and say, hey, nice job, I look at Larry, I go, hey, that means we can hunt the big six, right? <laughs> deer and deer hunting is brought to you by With Dan's recent success on a nice 10 point, Bob Robb finds himself in a good position to pursue the mighty six point that's made many appearances throughout the trip. With help from his skilled guide, Larry Compton, Bob is more than comfortable using the remaining days of his hunt going after the six pointer. We're trying to decide, well, what do we do now? It's the middle of the morning. It's a beautiful sunny day. Do we want to try to maybe still hunt and get in there and get a shot? Do we want to maybe set an ambush up for that evening? How do we want to play it? So we had a little discussion and we decided this. 
We, we have one more day to hunt after today. We know that this deer, we've seen him under these oak trees now. This is pretty much where he likes to hang out. So let's do this. Let's set a blind up here and leave it. And we'll go hunt another spot this evening. Let everything settle down. If a big buck comes in to our new spot, great, we're in business. If it doesn't, let's be here first thing in the morning and we'll try to take the six point. set the blind up. The blind is 40 yards from those oak trees. We brush it in. The wind's going to be right. The sun's going to be at our back. It's going to be nice. I sat down at the, at the picnic table at Ralph and Lenora's camp. Okay, our blind is 40 yards from those oak trees. Let's practice. So they have a, a 3D silhouette target. I sat and shot 20 arrows at that target sitting down at 40 yards and made sure my bow was dialed in for that distance. Pull the broadhead out first. It saves a lot of wear and tear on your target. We go out that evening, we see 20 does. We have a doe bed 15 feet from the blind for a half hour. They come to a water tank, but we don't see any bucks. Six fifteen in the morning, I can barely see there's a doe at those oak trees. Six twenty, another doe at the oak trees. We're just kind of sitting there, and then I look up, and across the road from the hayfield, here comes a deer. I put my glasses up. It's the six point. He's already here. So Ian and I are in the blind an hour before daylight in the morning. We figure we're not going to see this deer if we see him for two, three hours after daylight. 6.15 in the morning, I can barely see there's a doe at those oak trees. 6.20, another doe at the oak trees. We're just kind of sitting there and then I look up and across the road from the hay field, here comes a deer, I put my glasses up, it's the six point. He's already here. Holy smokes. Legs start shaking. It's, it's him, it's him. 
He comes in very slowly and very cautiously. Really, the blind is kind of blocking the camera. The deer feeds off into some trees and he's just nibbling leaves for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then he feeds off out of sight. And I think, okay, he's probably gonna go down the creek bottom, do his thing, and then he'll come right back through here, 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock, go back across the road in bed, we'll be in business. Five minutes later, Ian, Ian, here he comes, here he comes. He stops at the edge of those trees, eats a couple leaves, and just sort of senses to see what's going on. Thinks it's okay, and here he walks right into the open at 40 yards. I think it's a good shot, but I'm not sure because the arrow actually went in. We later found out it went through his front shoulder blade, hit another bone, broke at the ferrule, and bounced back out of the thing. But when you saw it in real time, you thought, did my arrow just bounce off him? Did, did I forget to change my practice point out for a real broadhead? All these thoughts are going through your head like, oh my goodness, what did I do? We call Larry, he comes back, we replay the footage on slow motion. We're like, you know, that was a good hit. It's not too low. The arrow, we, we went up and we found the arrow. You could see where we got a lot of penetration. So we're feeling a lot better about it, but there's no blood. So we give it an hour, we park, we try to act like it's, uh, you know, no big deal, but I'm quivering like a leaf. Then we decide to come in and do a reverse track. So we think we're gonna come in about two, 250 yards above the hay bales where we saw him go in the night before and we'll work our way down that creek bottom and do a grid search. And we did, lo and behold, maybe 50 yards from those hay bales, there he was. The shot had gone right through and ended up clipping both lungs and there he was and we had the big six. It was an unbelievable hunt for an unbelievable buck. He probably weighed 250 pounds on the hoof, big horns, we figure he's five or six years old. To me, an unusual, mature deer with what I call crazy horns, that's what it's all about for me. Everyone wants that eight point or 10 point. To me, I'm looking for age and something unique. And this deer had all that, big bodied, Roman nosed. He was obviously the boss of his little neighborhood. Whenever we saw him on this hunt, he was always by himself. Nobody bothered him. He had his own little area. And the hunt that we put together for this deer took several days actually of sort of moving the chest pieces into place and adjusting as we went along. And then when you see those big six point antlers, a, a couple of the, the best whitetails I've ever taken in my life were actually big, big six points. And to me, that, that uniqueness makes him a special, special trophy buck. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Hey Deer and Deer Hunting, Brad Fenson here with a tip for picking your shot angle on a deer. You know, 
I've learned over the years that a deer looks like it's broadside and it's not always broadside. You shoot them and it's a quartering away, slight quartering two, and it's not that perfect broadside. I'll tell you a way to get around that. Whenever you're watching your deer, watch their legs. If their legs are parallel to you, you know that it's broadside. If one of them is offset and you can see the second leg ahead of the one on your side, you know that it's quartering away. It may sound crazy, but deer often appear broadside and they're not. But by watching their legs, we can ensure when they line up that that deer is parallel to you. So I look at a lot of different things on the deer when they come in, where their butt is, where their head is, but I watch those legs continually. And the front legs especially tell me when that engine room is broadside to me and it's time to send an arrow. If not, it gives me a different aiming point for that quartering away shot because I want my arrow to exit through that shoulder or just in front of it. Again, picking the vital zone for a killing shot. So there's lots of different tips out there in terms of arrow placement and uh, everyone says shoot them broadside, but you have to make sure they're broadside to begin with. And if not, make sure that you have the vitals in front of your arrow when you release it. And the best way to do that is to pay attention to those front legs. Hunting apps on your smartphone, they're amazing, right? Well, I'm using the HuntStand Pro. and It's already impressed me a lot with their satellite imagery, their different maps, their 72 hour weather forecast, and their hunt zone wind graphics. Man, that's great. Whether you're whitetail hunting, you're predator hunting, waterfowl hunting, need to know how to set up the decoys, you can look, it shows you exactly where that wind's gonna blow, when, where, and how much. The mapping system, well, there's all kinds you can choose from. The satellite, hybrids, property, hunting lands, topographical. It's great for deer, elk, again, waterfowl, squirrel hunting, you name it. But they have got something that's uh, pretty cool, and that's their new advanced property search. And what that gives you is you can search nationwide with only a few clues and discover property hey, you might be overlooking. Say you know a guy's name, like uh, in Iowa, Farmer Fred, and you look him up and you see nationwide that he also owns land in South Carolina and maybe Florida, Georgia, Montana. That gives you some opportunities to look at some other hunts in those states because he's already given you permission on this land. But even if you only know the address, maybe the county, maybe the state, maybe the city, you can look it up and find these different properties. It's a great opportunity to expand your hunting areas without, well, scratching your head all, around, all over. And the other thing is, you can mark boundaries on your maps once you find that, so you know exactly where in the United States and where in a specific region you're going to be hunting. Hunt Stand Pro, it costs you a little money, you know, under 30 bucks for the year, that's pretty economical when you look at all the opportunities, all the hunting opportunities you can find right there on your smartphone.